Hey folks, Kevin here. Well, it's October 14th, 2018, and I'm up in the side of the property uh, where the wood line is behind me here. And uh, one of the things I, when I was clearing this spring, I noticed this small oak tree behind me here. Uh, oak tree, uh, as all nut trees, uh, they have a taproot, which makes them a challenge to transplant. Uh, I've had uh, people tell me before that it's impossible to transplant oak trees once they get to a certain size and all. And, uh, and the oak trees that I've shown you before, the one by the house, it's about 22 feet tall now. Uh, two years ago I transplanted that one. And I've successfully transplanted about six oak trees on the property. Uh, of varying sizes. This is the smallest one and this one's going to go up by pond too. Uh, the thing about oak trees and conifers is both of those groups of uh, tree species uh, have tap roots. Uh, a primary root that starts out as a seedling and goes way down. Uh, you've probably seen acorns before uh, where the tap root is oh, six, eight inches long when the leaf, uh, when just the first cotyledon leaves are, are showing up, or the first true leaves are showing up rather. So a tree, uh, a young oak tree can have a, a taproot that's three feet, uh, close to a meter in length. Uh, I don't know how long, how uh, far down this taproot will go, but I brought the excavation bucket here to go ahead and dig along both sides of the taproot. Now, one of the challenges that I have on this property, because it's it's very bony gravel, uh, sometimes the, the taproot will be going down, hit a couple of rocks or boulders, and go to the side. And uh, and I try to give it enough, enough uh, breath when I'm uh, digging with the uh, mini excavator so that I try not to damage the taproot as, as, as little as, I try to damage it as little as possible. However, I have had them be successful when they're at 90 degree angles. Instead of just being straight down like this, they're actually bent to the side and have a split in them. Uh, that taproot really is responsible for maintaining their, their ability to withstand those high winds. Uh, so it's really important that I do my best to, to deal with that. I will prune this tree some as well once I get it over there. And this is going over by Pond 2 near where the uh, flowering crab apple tree was uh, transplanted recently. Uh, and I'll post a link to that video in the upper right hand corner. So I've got Bumblebee, the mini excavator here with the excavation bucket on now. Uh, what I've done already is I've gone over by Pond 2, and again, the area where I'll be planting this tree was a very low spot where the old uh, rock pile was, so it's it's got a big dip in the area. So I took some uh, fill from an area by the bioremediation canal. There's more soil building up over time, so I dug some more of that up, and I brought it up there, brought, brought a few scoops of, of the material up there, and then used the grading bucket to smooth it out, flatten it out some. Switched over to the excavation bucket and excavated uh, a hole uh, down almost three feet deep, where I'm getting down to some deep, nice, uh, nice soil down in there. And right in that area, there's a big hugo culture pit down in there. And uh, uh, I try to make it about two buckets width as well. Hopefully that'll be wide enough for for uh, putting this one down in there. Unfortunately, well, we'll have to see. Uh, the last couple of plants that I've transplanted, it's been really loose gravel, and the and the gravel has fallen right off the root balls when I've when I've gone to go to transplant them. So the area is ready where we're going to transplant it. Uh, let's go ahead and start off. See if I can sex successfully get this tree up and out of there. I'll probably have to strap it off to the uh, to the stick or the boom here uh, once I get down to that spot and try not to damage that taproot. So here we go.
Okay, I just finished getting the oak tree transplanted over here by Pond 2. Uh, as I mentioned before, I went ahead and brought up the level of the soil over here near Pond 2 so that it wasn't a low, low spot where water would collect. And then I went ahead and excavated out a, uh, a nice deep double wide, double bucket width, uh, excavation bucket width of the uh, excavator and pretty deep over here. Then I went over to the area where the oak tree was and I went all the way around, I dug a nice deep uh, pit all the way around the, uh, the oak tree base. Uh, I did not see any damage as I was going digging down to any of the uh, roots that belong to this tree. Now this, that whole site, there was a whole bunch of uh, dead ash trees and, and other trees that had been damaged and all that I cut down or dug out previously. So there were still uh, other roots from other trees intertwined in the site where I excavated out this, this oak tree. Uh, but the roots, everything that I could see as I was digging down, no sign of the taproot extending out laterally, despite there being tremendous number of large rocks, boulders down in the, down in the, uh, in the area where the roots were for this, for this tree. I got those all out, couldn't, and I got down there and closely examined uh, the whole perimeter of the excavation site. No sign of a taproot being uh, lateralized, going off to the side and being cut off at all. And uh, I took the bucket and got it, got it uh, wrapped around underneath the, uh, the base of the oak tree and uh, looked for any uh, taproot that had been cut off at all. Nothing down in there. I tied it off using a, a cargo strap to the, uh, to the stick of the excavator and was able to get it up successfully out of the hole. Then I went back down in the hole and looked again to see if I could see any sign of the taproot. And I was quite surprised that, that I couldn't uh, identify a broken piece of taproot. It must have been in the back of the bucket uh, it, tucked in there. And my suspicion is based on the number of rocks that were down there, as that taproot was going down, it ended up splitting, bifurcating or trifurcating, and just ended up going back into the back of the bucket. No damaged taproot seen. So I think I got the entire root system of the tree up in the system. I did give it a quick prune beforehand. Anything that was not a nice wide axis, uh, a wide angle coming off of the, of the axis of the trunk of the tree, something that would split in the future. So I pruned everything off and that, that also helps me to, to get the trunk pretty close to the stick when I tie it off as well to decrease the amount of soil, soil loss. So there was minimal soil loss getting it over here. It was really just a short distance. Set it down in the hole, started backfilling some with the regular uh, fill that came out of the hole here. And then I went and got some uh, compost, filled that in around the remaining part, then filled it back in all the way and compacted the soil around the site. So overall, I was surprised that I didn't see a big taproot. Delighted that I didn't see any evidence of a damaged taproot. Uh, not surprised that there were so many rocks in there, really bony ground that we've got here, or the other roots that were there from the other trees. So, uh, fingers crossed, this tree will do well uh, come next next year, and uh, after it develops the, the further roots next season, the year after, it'll start shooting up, just like the one just south of the house that I that I put in. I think three years now, now, and it's almost tripled in size since then. The first year, no, no significant growth, but uh, no dieback, and then I pruned it, and then she really shot up pretty well. So, uh, again, the two main groups of trees that have the deep taproot are the, uh, the nut-producing trees and the conifers. So if you found this video of value, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, hit that bell icon if you want to be notified when we post more videos. And certainly folks, have a fantastic day. Don't forget to ask any questions or leave any comments down below. Take care folks. Bye bye now.